Hi! Do you know where to look for a sneak peek into the Kotlin team's plans? Their answer is the Kotlin public roadmap, which was just updated to reflect our plans for Kotlin 1.7.0 and beyond. Go check it out, you can find the link beneath the video. And for those of you who just want a quick overview of what's going on, we've put together a list of 7 notable highlights in this video. Subscribe to our channel, we'll continue covering the future of Kotlin in other videos, so make sure not to miss them. The experimental version of the K2 compiler frontend already shows great results. It's able to compile huge JVM production projects such as Kotlin itself and IntelliJ IDEA. For those projects, the compilation speed is on average two times faster. We plan to continue stabilizing it by compiling more projects and fixing the bugs and performance issues we find. The alpha version will also provide a preview of the new plugin infrastructure that will allow the community to build more tools. We are also investing into support for non-JVM backends, which will allow users to build multi-platform projects. KMM is going beta in Spring 2022. Our main focus for now is finding and fixing as many issues that interrupt user workflows as possible. This includes code highlighting, navigation and completion, debugging, and build tooling stability. We'll also continue to improve the concurrency experience. We've just released an experimental Kotlin native memory manager that allows you to share coroutines code between iOS and Android apps. Future work includes improving stability and performance to make future migration to the new memory manager easier. In Kotlin, you can have an extension to the class only if the corresponding class declares a companion object. It brings with it many unwanted consequences, such as an inability to extend many of the third-party library classes and an efficiency of declaring private static class members. We are planning to prototype a solution that is based on introducing the new concept of a namespace. It's an ephemeral object without an instance that every class automatically possesses. Namespace members are naturally compiled down to static members on, on the JVM. This keeps static helpers grouped together in the source, but removes all the object overhead. This is also supposed to significantly improve Kotlin's interoperability with Java static methods and will enable extensions on any Java types, so it should help with further Kotlin JVM adoption. We believe that having a robust Kotlin-specific solution for collecting the test coverage of Kotlin applications and libraries is essential for the ecosystem growth. That's why we introduced Cover, a Gradle plugin that measures code coverage for Kotlin code and works with all language constructs, including inline functions. Among our long-term plans for Cover are DSL for verification rules, Jekako usage stabilization, advanced filtering, and advanced Android support. Another tool for library developers that we work on is Docker, a documentation generation tool. We are promoting it to beta with 1.6.0 with a focus on usability and design unification with the official Kotlin documentation. The next step is to promote Docker to stable with only one stable output, HTML. Other output formats like GitHub Markdown or JQL, API for plugin developers, and wall-to-wall -wall support for Java will stay in alpha. To move them forward, we will run a series of interviews and wait for your feedback. Moving the Kotlin IDE plugin to the IntelliJ platform development infrastructure was a complex engineering task that allowed us to provide support for the new tooling functionality together with the IntelliJ platform. However, there are some drawbacks too. For example, if you're an AP user, you may have noticed that IntelliJ ID AP releases don't support preview versions of upcoming Kotlin releases. We plan to improve our internal infrastructure to solve this and other problems with the Kotlin ID plugin release adoption. Have you ever been in a situation during a party where you wanted to show your friends some brand new Kotlin feature and suddenly then realized that you didn't bring your laptop? For this and many other cases, such as uh, learning the language, uh, prototyping and knowledge sharing, we have Kotlin Playground. 
We see that many of you enjoy using it, so we want to provide you with more capabilities. If you are a new user, we plan to simplify the user experience with more examples and tips. If you are an advanced user, we want to provide you with the ability to save progress over devices, open multiple tabs, export files, and more. And what's even more exciting, we will make Kotlin Playground mobile-friendly, so that the party won't be ruined if you forget your laptop. Are you excited about some of our plans? Share in the comments what features you're looking forward to the most. And subscribe to our channel, as we'll make more content about the most upvoted features.